A drought is a prolonged dry period in a natural climate cycle that can occur anywhere in the world. It is a slow onset disaster characterized by the lack of precipitation resulting in water shortage. Droughts can have serious impact on health, agriculture, economies, energy and the environment. Agricultural Officer Donawa Jackson is the Regional Supervisor for Region 2. Mr. Jackson provided guidance on what we should expect in the next couple of months regarding the impending dry period. We were advised by the by Karikov that the next three months or so would be very um, dry period that we could experience some drought conditions. So what farmers can experience is that they can have a lot of deaths of their crops or crop failure. You can also have reduced yield if necessary actions are not taken to, um, to mitigate against the reduced rainfall that is anticipated. Over the last two years or so, we had a severe drought condition in Stevenson and the Grandines. And one of the things that we would have observed is that during the period of drought, many farmers are unable to carry out a lot of the cultural practices. For example, in order to apply your fertilizer, there's a need for water. Water is very important so that the fertilizer can dissolve so that the plant can actually take it up. And there was also a substantial reduction in yield in a lot of the root crops and also in the vegetables as well. It is well known that areas that rely on rainfall and surface water are more likely to experience drought. The mainland of St. Vincent is very reliant on water for numerous reasons. The Grenadine Islands, on the other hand, often suffer from water shortages because of the lack of rivers. In the event of a drought, these islands will be severely affected. Agricultural Officer Donawa Jackson will advise us on the importance of fruit trees in dry periods. The fruit tree crops um, are not that severely um, impacted by drought because of their deep root system. One of the other um, fall off that we would have observed during the period of time too is that um, many farmers who normally would have planted around this time were unable to plant and going forward that if the drought forecast is a reality then we would experience those same phenomenon if necessary actions or steps are not put in place. Now it is important to note we would be experiencing an El Nino effect in terms of reduced rainfall and there are a lot of social economic implications as a result of that. When farmers are unable to plant which means that they would not be able to get the sort of income that they normally would have as also what you would have is a reduced revenue income for household throughout the agricultural communities and as a result of that you're going to have a decrease in employment because farmers are no longer going to employ the workforce that they normally used to employ. And also, too, we have a problem with food security as a result of reduced um, acreages of certain crops not being able to be grown. So there are far-reaching implications of a drought duration. Depending on the length of the drought, it can have far-reaching implications for the social economic well-being of many of our farmers. A drought can last for months or years. Surface water quickly evaporates in warm, dry conditions, leading to an increased risk of drought. Mr. Jackson spoke about the impending drought and offered advice to farmers as to how they may put measures in place to safeguard against the effects of the dry period. We are getting some rain intermittently from time to time, but it's not that sufficient because of the high temperature that we're experiencing and the high winds, the evaporation is very high, especially in the lower rainfall areas. So what we advise is that farmers who have access to pen manure, especially those who are planting the vegetables, they can incorporate these into the planting holes and um, these will help to retain the moisture over a longer period of time. Those who have access to a river, they can actually use the river water if they have access to a pump or something and they can source a pump and they can actually store water, uh, pump water onto their farms as well. The other thing that we are also advocating to is that they can actually mulch around the plant using the plant, plant residue, grasses, 
and things of that sort to, to put around the plant roots. That, that would help to reduce the evapotranspiration from around the plant roots and that will reduce the amount of water that you actually apply. apply. And so it's a matter for those who have necessary resources um, to start to put system in place to, uh, to, re to reduce and minimize the, 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 the impact of, of um, the drought condition that we would be experiencing over the next two, three months or so. What we have seen here this morning by Mr. Valentine Samuel has indicated that the assistance that he received from the Japanese climate change, particularly tanks, would have actually helped him to some extent that he need more tanks, more storage capacity in order to be able to um, do the sort of operation that he want to, to, to carry out. You need water for critical stages of your operation. For example, if you are transplanting your seedlings, you need water to wet your plants. And also, too, if you need to do any sort of weed control, you need water to carry out those operations as well. So I think um, along that line that um, we are advising farmers to take necessary precautions uh, for those who might not have access to necessary um, means of um, water storage and things of that sort, uh, drip irrigation, that it might be best to wait until the rain starts to come before you risk your, your limited resources um, to plant and next thing you can unable to wet them and things of that sort. According to meteorologists, the drought will affect the region in the next couple of months. This is expected to have a serious impact on the agricultural sector. Mr. Valentine Samuel is a farmer from Argyle who is already experiencing water shortage on his farm. Mr. Samuel shared his experience with us. I am one of the beneficiaries from, from the Japanese Climate Change Program and they assist me good at that time. Just as about to giving up from being a farmer, they come in and they assist me with some tank and some jeep line and that give me a little courage to continue. So I still adding more to the project like getting tank, hose and so on because if it was not for that, I would not have been a farmer now. Being a, a, a farmer in Argyle I encourage some of my other farmer that they should do like me. For instance, we go around and we buy empty barrel. You notice some holes they tread on and all behind of me. Then there's holes what we buy and we try to set up our own irrigation in our own way. So there's another guy named Joe De Silva. I and he work together in trying to set up our own little irrigation and extending on what I have. Mr. Valentine Samuel also spoke about the other challenges as a farmer. And the problem we face now is to find things to store the water into. And when we store the water now to get the water by the plant root, there's a problem there. We need more drip line. We cannot find no good agriculture shop in St. Vince. We sell the drip line, the proper holes and fittings. These are some of the problems we face, but my friend Joe the Silver and myself and other guy, we try to make the best out of what we have. And if you notice, there's a lot of barrels spread out all over the place. I go and I buy them barrels for $50 each. So when you check one up there, one day, two down there, four out by the road, buy I buy them for $50. And I am buying barrels just to store the water when the rain comes. But if we get maybe a two tank, a three tank, we could do more. And on this farm, it's just about two acres of land and farming on this farm. And I tell you, if it's two, three thousand gallons of water, it could just be with about say, half an acre. And which and well, I want to make use of all the land in the dry season. But the water is a problem. Some years ago, Mr. Jackson Danawa introduced me to passion fruit because passion fruit could do well in the dry season and pineapple. Which is why I tell you watermelon and okra is my main crop. But like how things is going, I may have to change to go back to passion fruit and pineapple could do well in the dry season just because of the lack of water. And it's really crucial around this area, crucial. Sometimes with the hay, we see the rain coming on the sea. But by the time it's ready to hit the land, 
you can up Mespo, Richland Park, and you find you only find a little jizzling, a little jizzling. And I have had a good farmer in Vermont. About say three times a day, he calling me. Vala got in a shower. You got in any out there? I said, boy, no. Just come and you go see. I they walking, he tell me he the sheltering. So water is the problem out there. I mostly like to grow vegetables. And watermelon is one of my main crops. And the thief man I love to thief watermelon. And when I plant, I always say I put in aside 20% of my crop just for thief man. So if I want to grow a thousand pounds of watermelon, I have to try to plant in a way that I could get about say 13 to 1400 pounds. So that'll be time when they don't take what they want and me end up with a thousand pounds. So I say 20% of my crop, any crop, but mostly watermelon, goes to death. Boy, I tell you, I just feel so nice when I come out and I could eat a head of lettuce. I could take two tomatoes and some cucumber for make a sandwich. I feel nice when I eat this. I know I grew this. This come from my farm. Now, not even the money, but well, sometimes I lose money. Now. And when I lose money, I people tea from me. I feel bad. But when I wake up this morning, I could just go out the pan of lettuce bed and pull a two leaf of lettuce. And I self put that in my bread and I eat that. It's a joy. I feel great. 